What's going on my YouTube family? Welcome back everybody. So it's the evening before the video that you guys are about to see and I just want to thank you guys so much for that live stream. Everybody, each and every one of you guys, thank you so much for all that support. I did not expect the outcome of that that it was. Big shout out to all you guys for that, being there, supporting me, asking all the comments, all the kind comments, all the good conversation that I've seen, and all the new faces as well. I really appreciate you guys joining the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you wishing me a happy 30th. Thank you guys so much. In the beginning of each month, we'll shout in there. You guys can ask me from previous month's videos all sorts of questions, so the live things will probably maybe be bi-monthly. On to the video, my friends. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you guys later. How you doing, guys? Welcome back to That Wood Guy. I hope everybody's doing good today. Another hot, humid day out here. Today, I want to discuss how I run my Dyna firewood processor. Every firewood processor is different, and they all run different. I want to specifically share with you guys how my Dyna SC14 runs. Staged with the Bobcat, starting with the Bobcat, I load the logs on deck here. And the deck is not a very long deck. It's about a six foot length from front rail to back rail. So you're gonna get away with like a 13 foot log on maximum length. Some people try to push 20 footers, but I've ran into uh, issues running them. So I stick with cutting them down to 13 foot. And you guys have seen me in previous videos cut down my logs from log loads or logs that are just long in general to be able to put them on the deck of the processor. Um, depending on the size of the logs, it depends on how many logs will fill up the deck. Typically on average, it's eight to 10 logs, again, depending on the size. And I try to get one as I'm loading the logs, you guys will see, I try to always put one into the feed tray and then fill the whole deck up so that I at least have a full, full processor deck so that I'm not running in and out of the Bobcat. I try to do that as least as possible for time. If you guys follow me behind the machine, this is my conveyor for the sawdust. And it's actually an old firewood conveyor that's been modified and now it's being used for my sawdust disposal on the processor because anybody who knows running these machines, they produce a tremendous amount of sawdust and it's always a hassle scooping the sawdust away nonstop to keep the machine cleared out from debris and just keeping everything clean in general. So I have a generator hooked up that runs the conveyor because I don't have to run any extension cords across my driveway, running a, you know, across with equipment. The generator is stored underneath the conveyor, underneath a little tarp here. It keeps it all safe from debris and the rain. And the sawdust just piles up from there. How many loads do you guys think is in this pile of sawdust? Oh my god. Cut that part out. Oh, back to the generator. The generator doesn't cost much to run. On average, guys, I would honestly guess in total fuel usage for the year, maybe a hundred bucks. So it's not much to, you know, hook up the generator. Keeping it separate from the house, I have no extension cords running across driveways, so I'm not running over them with heavy equipment until I get maybe an underground line someday in the future. But for now, it works great. It's a cheap little machine. It runs perfect for what I'm doing, just, you know, running the conveyor. Well, okay, I gotta fire the conveyor up first, though, anyway, so... Okay, let's reset. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> I'm gonna fire up the conveyor and then we're gonna go back over and fire up the processor and show you guys how the whole system works. get some more logs? Let's get started. 
Here's the control panel of the machine. This is our ignition. We have our throttle. We have our choke. This is for our wedge, up and down. This is for the deck. Forward, backwards. This is for your splitter. Splitter forward, splitter backwards with a detent that automatically goes off when the ram reaches in. And this is for our saw clamp. The saw clamp up, this clamps the log down, the saw comes down and cuts, which you release when the saw is done cutting, and then which you can push the log forward in the log tray. So now I'm gonna fire, I'm gonna fire the machine up. So now I'm gonna fire the machine up. So now I'm gonna fire, I'm gonna fire the machine up. So now I'm gonna fire the machine up. And so we start with firing up the machine, turn on the ignition, give it a choke, give it a little bit of throttle, and let's fire up the machine. You hear the machine pop over, you push in the choke. Now we are running. Like I said earlier, this is our throttle. This is a little detent so the throttle won't slide in and out on you. I'm gonna push this red button here to pull the throttle out and the machine is going to rev up. You're gonna have to talk loud. Now our machine is ready to run. It's up to RPM. You should be able to hear that. Time. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you can hear me in this video. If not, I'll talk louder right now. <laughs> okay. This is the lever that's going to move the log forward off of the deck. We're going to push this lever to the left. That just put a log into our log tray of which now we go to this lever. And moving this lever left moves our log towards the saw. This is our measurement stick. I've got mine marked for 17 inches in between 16 to 18, which is a standard length of firewood. I usually ask my customers if they have a specific length they want, and I go from there. Typically, everybody just wants the standard. Going with the standard, we're going to move our log out to our orange marker with this lever. Make sure our safety shield is in front of us. Now we can engage the saw and start cutting the piece. The same lever that you moved the log forward with, I am going to now pull the lever back towards me. Our clamp is going to come down and clamp the log, and the saw is going to come down and cut.
left hand on the splitter. If you guys watch me, it's a continuing motion back and forth. Splitting, grab, splitting, cutting.